today we're going to continue the series of Life After Death and in today's discussion we're going to have a look at what transpired with regards to the unbelievers uh, after they die. We've in the series thus far concentrated on what happens to believers but in today's um, teaching we want to look at what ha happens to unbelievers. And so just like the believers, when unbelievers die, they depart, they leave their bodies behind, their bodies also um, uh, uh, disintegrate into dust, just like the believers' bodies do. And the unbelievers go to a place that is called hell. There is only one location uh, set aside for unbelievers, and that, pla that location is called hell. Um, our Lord discussed that particular topic on numerous occasions. One of the passages of Scripture we'll pick up here is in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. The Scripture says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And so our Lord, um, in con uh, context in this passage, uh, what had happened is that some people had reported to the Lord Jesus that um, Pilate had mingled the blood of some of the Galileans with their sacrifices. And so our Lord made the comment. He said, guys, don't get excited about the way that these people have died, um, because that's not the issue. The issue is where do people go after they die? And our Lord is very plain here. He said, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. When our Lord spoke about um, people perishing, he was talking about them being cast into hell after they died. And so very clearly, our Lord is telling us that all unbelievers, when they die, they perish, and they are thus cast into hell. And so there are a lot of uh, people in the world who foolishly believe that only the very wicked people are cast down into hell, while the relatively good people make it into heaven. But that's not the case at all. Our Lord Jesus Christ has made it very plain that all who choose not to repent and believe in Him will, at the end of their lives, be cast down into hell. They will perish. Another scripture that our Lord speaks around the same concept is in Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. He's, uh, the scripture says, And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. And so in this life, um, God will never override the free will of mankind. And so God presents his gospel of salvation to the world, and he the world are allowed to make up their own minds. They either choose to accept it or they choose to reject it, and God allows that to happen. Nevertheless, in the gospel message that is proclaimed to the world, God warns the world that there is a consequence to those who choose to reject his gospel of salvation. And we just read the passage our Lord speaks about that, consequence. Um, and so the consequence that God says, you guys, if you don't accept my salvation, you will be cast into hell for all eternity and you will suffer in torment in that place. Now, people still reject the gospel of salvation. Why? Because two reasons mainly. Firstly, they do not want to um, submit themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And secondly, they do not believe that hell actually does exist. However, when unbelievers do die, they discover to the absolute horror that hell in fact does exist and they are then cast down there against their will. So whereas on the earth they can exercise their free will, God will not override that. He allows them to make their own choice. After they die, their free will is removed from them and they are cast down into hell against their free will. Um, and that is where they will suffer for all eternity. And that's why the Lord said to us, guys, you need to fear God in this aspect because, you know, there is a, an eternal consequence to those who choose to reject the gospel of salvation. Um, sadly, most people 
choose the option of rejecting the gospel of salvation. Our Lord also spoke around that concept uh, when he was on the earth as well. In this passage of scripture, we pick a part of it, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Our Lord speaking, he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. And so um, our Lord just tells us very plainly from this passage of Scripture is that not many people go to heaven. Most people go to hell because it's easier to go to hell than it is to go to heaven because um, of the fact that people just don't like the laws of God. They do not want to submit themselves to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. So approximately how many people are in hell today? If the vast majority of the earth's population have descended into hell, how many people would that be roughly? Well, to give us some idea as to how many people are actually down there today, uh, we can go back to the scriptures and can look at uh, one example to give us some indication as to numbers around this concept. And the passage we can look at is 1 Kings 19, 14 to 18. I won't recount the whole passage. I'm just going to um, discuss the point. What happened was on that occasion, Elijah the prophet was proclaiming to God, God, I'm the only one left in Israel. Everybody else has denied you and is no longer following after you. God's response to Elijah at that time was that he had reserved to himself 7,000 uh, Israelites who had not bowed their knees to Baal. So we can now look at that and say, okay, well, how many people would that have been with regards to the total population? Well, the, the, the estimated um, adult population of the Jews at that time was roughly about 3 million people. And so we see that of the 3 million people, there are 7,000 who are in heaven today. And the balance of 2,993,000 are in hell today. And so very, uh, again, people mistakenly think that the Jews under the old covenant were saved and the Gentiles weren't. But this passage of scripture that we've just discussed uh, points to the truth that very few Jews actually were saved. The vast majority of them ended up in hell. Um, but not also, also not all Gentiles under the Old Covenant went to hell. There were Gentiles who were saved as well. The men at, at Nineveh would be an example, because don't forget, Joel preached to them and they um, repented. Or Jonah, sorry, preached to them and they repented. Uh, the Queen of Sheba, she's in heaven today. Job and all of his friends are in heaven today. So there's a lot of Gentiles under the Old Covenant who are in heaven today. Why? Because God only required that people believe in him in order for them to be saved. And that was uh, the criteria that they met at that particular time. But again, let's get back to the numbers now. So how many people roughly are in hell today? Well, it's estimated that roughly about from the time of Adam until present day, roughly about 130 billion people have lived and died in the earth. Now, of that 130 billion people, about 25 billion of those um, num that number would be children. And so all of those children under the age of 13 who have died um, are in heaven today. So that leaves us with a number of roughly about 105 billion people that have lived and died since Adam came into the earth. And if we were to take that same uh, percentage that uh, we discussed with regards to the 7,000 of the children of Israel and apply it to that 105 billion, well, it means that uh, well in excess of 104 billion people are in hell today and only about 300 million people are in heaven. And so very clearly, the vast majority of the people uh, on the earth have been cast down into hell and that is where they currently are. Again, our Lord speaks around the same concept about hell. He spoke about hell quite a lot. Mark chapter 9, verse 43 and 44. Scripture says, our Lord speaking, he says, If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Um, and so 
we've already established that hell is a location under the earth. And so it's, it's quite a, a sobering thought that as we walk around on the planet to think that just below our feet, uh, further down, we don't know how far down it is, but there are billions and billions of people who are suffering in torment right now under our feet as we walk around on the planet. And so our Lord describes hell as a place where the fire is never quenched. And if you recall about um, the incident we discussed with the rich man, he was in torment in the flame. And that's why he was asking Abraham if Lazarus could just dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool his tongue. And so that is the kind of torment that the unbelievers are experiencing in hell currently. They are tormented in flames. But also our Lord speaks about the worm that does not die there. And in Isaiah 14, 11, the Bible describes Satan, when he gets cast down into hell, as being covered with worms. Now that particular torment is not applicable only to Satan. It's applicable to all who are cast down into that location. They are tormented with worms that never die and are crawling all over them all the time. And so they're tormented in flame and they're tormented by the worms. But our Lord also uh, just mentioned this particular point in Luke 13, 28, where he described hell as being a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, why is that? Because the, the unbelievers who are down there recognize that they are there because of their own fault, because they chose to, um, to reject the salvation message that God provided for them in this life. And so they have, in fact, committed themselves to an eternal punishment. And so they continually are weeping and gnashing their teeth as they realize that that is their lot for the rest of eternity. And one of the other things that we pick up in Scripture about hell is that um, there are different levels to hell, and the lower one goes down in, the, in the, the location of hell, the greater the degree of torment that is suffered by the individual. And uh, Isaiah 14, 15 speaks of Satan being cast down into the lowest pit of hell. So obviously he is going to be one who will experience the majority of the, well not the majority, but the most torment. And so um, the further one is cast down into hell, the more torment the one would suffer. All of them still suffer torment nevertheless, but uh, some the more wicked ones incur more uh, punishment, so to speak. They all are punished, but some get more punishment than the rest. And so that's how hell basically works from that point of view. But also hell is a very vast location, just like heaven is a vast location, we've already mentioned it in the, in the series. Hell is also a vast location and it can never be full, the scripture says in Proverbs 27 verse 20. However, at the end of the age, hell will be emptied um, because we read in the book of Revelation that right at the end, at the second death, at the judgment, what happens is that Hades, hell and death are also cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and so hell will be emptied at the end of the age but nevertheless hell is where all unbelievers are cast down into when they die every single one no exceptions whatsoever it matters not what race they are it matters no not what gender they are it matters not what religion they are it matters not whether they lived a good life or a very wicked life all unbelievers who choose not to accept the gospel of salvation in Christ Jesus, that is their eternal destination. And they find out to their horror when they die how real hell actually is. I'm going to end the teaching on that one.